Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, I, I, I did. I was among people that suggested that uh, students do this, but it's really been the students' initiative from the very first time, and I've just enjoyed watching these uh, these conferences. They were really very very impressive meetings. Uh, also, to be invited here is very intimidating. It, it's sort of like uh, being on this uh, show. Do you know what a fifth grader knows, or something? What they <laughs> Uh, because uh, it's really a, a good program here. So I think all the speakers, you have invited speakers, are <coughs> just trying to do their best to compete with the uh, student talk. So, uh. <coughs> so uh, this work, I'll talk mostly about work that's uh, joint with uh, let's see. Uh, my student, uh, Ji Zhu, and I. He's not giving a talk, so it won't be an uh, overlap. Um, so it's analysis of peer-to-peer -peer communication and networks. I mainly mean uh, over the Internet in, in this uh, context. So I'll talk, uh, give an overview of this peer-to-peer -peer communication. Uh, then I'll uh, discuss a fluid analysis after a paper of Masuli and Bojnovic, and then uh, the, a direct stochastic analysis that uh, Zhizhu and I did, and uh, then some discussion about that. And feel free to uh, ask me any questions. Uh, try to go through not too fast, and uh, so let me know. So, on the overview, uh, for a traditional file service, there'd be a, a one file server, and then if there's clients, the file would separately download the files to all of the clients. Okay, and this puts a big load on the file ser uh, server. So, in a peer-to-peer -peer file service, the uh, the file share or the source would send files to some of the clients, mm -hmm. and then those clients would pass the file on to other clients. Okay, so this is a much more scalable way to distribute files. This is like a first generation uh, system where a whole file is transferred from, one, from the uh, client to the uh, computers. It's like this, so the entire file is transferred first. <coughs> and, uh, and the uh, so if the file is large, then you've got a long delay before the users become useful. One user has to get the whole file and then uh, send it to someone else. It takes a while. And if users depart midway, so they get half of the file, then it's wasted, that transfer, because they're not going to transfer it on. Okay. So in the second generation peer-to-peer -peer system, the file is broken up into pieces. For example, in BitTorrent, it might be 200 pieces. They might be a quarter megabyte each. These pieces go to peers, and then as soon as a peer gets a piece, it becomes useful, and it can start transferring that piece to other peers at the same time it's downloading. So it goes like that. <coughs> so it's more efficient at serving larger files, and BitTorrent, eDonkey, um, and there's a bunch of other peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing uh, services <coughs> use that. Uh, this is a I guess six years old already, but uh, the relative popularity of peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, uh, this is a, some network traffic in a 24-hour period, and if anything, these days it's, it's even larger than this. So this is BitTorrent traffic, uh, eDonkey traffic, FastTrack, Nutella, and then HTTP, and then other non-peer-to-peer -peer traffic, so it's like down here. It's a very large part of the traffic on the Internet these days is peer-to-peer -peer traffic. Uh, the file types in eDonkey to see what people are downloading. Uh, this is video and other files and audio. So a lot of it is video files, which are large files. Uh, a typical way that uh, the flow of the, the information happens is a, like a flash crowd. When some file becomes popular and people start learning about it, start downloading, then the number of downloads, this is like downloads per day, this is uh, from December 21st, 03, till uh, <coughs> about a two-week period. And so that the number of downloads per day goes up here to 4,000 per day. It sort of st stays constant for a while, and it starts decreasing as the, uh, the crowd starts getting saturated. So it's kind of a, a transient uh, be behavior. Now, uh, there's lots of different types of peer-to-peer -peer systems, and our motivation isn't to pirate DVD files. 
but uh, it's to, to understand uh, how second generation peer-to-peer -peer systems uh, work. And there's a lot of systems that do work. They're relatively new, and they have lots of different aspects to them, and, and it's not readily apparent what aspects make the system work and what are just sort of put in there um, just in case. So some of the issues are the, uh, the peer selection strategies. So how do peers get matched up with other peers to figure out who transfers what? Uh, the piece selection strategies, so once you have a contact between two peers, which pieces of the files should be transferred? You might know there's some one, one thing called rarest first. You try to transfer pieces that are rare in some sense so that those could be more useful to be transferred somewhere else. Uh, push versus pull, if, if A contacts B, do you contact B to push something, give something to them, or to pull something from them? Or should it be a sort of tit-for-tat uh, exchange where they do a mutual exchange? Uh, the uh, effects of heterogeneous link speeds is, is very important in the internet. Many uh, clients are attached with you know high 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 bit rate, you know multiple megabits per second, and others are hundreds of kilobits per second. And so the the heterogeneity of the link speeds and then the effect of the network topologies uh, can be very important. And what I'll talk about today, I'm, I'm not going to be actually talking about those at all. Uh, there, there's a large uh, literature on this, and it's growing, and there's, uh, there's uh, conferences on peer-to-peer -peer technology. So um, there's just definitely a lot of aspects. <coughs> kind of an interesting thing uh, is ISP-friendly operation. The Internet service providers often have to pay more if they have traffic coming out of their internet going out of their air service area going to other service areas so uh, if the service provider well you know one reaction to the service provider is to say this peer-to-peer -peer traffic is is garbage I want to uh, just throttle it get rid of it okay and some that's some view of some people they say uh, the internet's broken we can fix it by filtering out all the peer-to-peer -peer traffic that is we go into the packets so we see what's peer-to-peer -peer and we just stop it but that's you know, two-thirds of the traffic on the Internet. And for, for some, and it's been here a long time, and it seems to be getting better, and it works very well. Um, is it live stream? I, I mean, I, could, I didn't even have to download a client. Um, my, my browser has got a sort of peer-to-peer -peer client built in, and you can just turn on. And, and it's, it's not all illegal. BBC, for example, in England was using peer-to-peer -peer for BBC Channel 4 although it's uh, stopped doing that recently. Uh, <coughs> but the, uh, the ISP providers um, would, I think they would like to support, it, it adds value to the Internet, uh, but they would like to do it in a less expensive way. So if the peers within a service provider can help each other rather than going to outside, then it's cheaper for the service provider. But what that if you want to get into that, then you might uh, be looking at smaller populations because you've got a population within a service area and you don't have the whole world, although you can go to the rest of the world if, you, if you're missing some pieces. But uh, so there's a lot of applications besides file transfer. There's live streaming, for example, a soccer match, um, concerts, uh, video on demand. So you'd like to look like uh, you've got channels and you start, you want to flip through the channels and start seeing things without too much of a delay. So there's a lot of issues with how you cache pieces of the, the file around the Internet. Uh, it could be uh, online interactive gaming or instruction. It could just be used as a multiplier to uh, get more uh, people involved in uh, more realistic games where you have a lot of... Uh, What's the World of Warcraft? How many of you use World of Warcraft? <laughs> oh, that's <coughs> it's a it's a multi-billion-dollar thing with uh, millions of uh, subscribers. <coughs> um, but anyway, you probably wouldn't be here if you well, <laughs> <laughs> if you were in that world <coughs> with your avatar and such. So, uh, <coughs> so this is kind of a general background, and it's sort of a, a reason we want to. Uh, 
study the peer-to-peer -peer systems. But then when we look through all these different applications, every time we look at a different paper, there's a, a different model and, uh, and different assumptions and, and there's some simulations. And then we're trying to get somewhere. So what we decided to do is to try to find a few kind of attractive models that we could study and, and you know, proof theorems about and, and, and they would illustrate the principles. And I thought I'd talk primarily about one, one model or, or, or a family of models. And they were f the first published versions, I think, are this, this paper of Masuli and Bojnovic, Coupon Replication Systems. This is an Infocom paper and then a, a conference paper. Okay, so this is the model. So we've got, um, it's like a queuing system there where customers ha come into this uh, queue and they have to be served, but they sort of serve each other by giving each other pieces. Okay, so the black lines here are peers, the flow of peers, and then the dashed lines are the flow of pieces. So the peers come into this system and <coughs> they may get a, a piece upon arrival. They contact some website or tracker or something that, or, that gives them a piece when they, they come into the system. And then the, the, this dashed line here means that they're exchanging pieces among themselves. And then there may be also be a fixed seed that contacts the peers and uploads pieces to the peers. And through this, they get uh, pieces. And then when they get a col collection, they leave the system. And so this is a model of that scenario. So as a Markov model, there's a fixed seed, uniform contacts, random, random useful piece. That's sort of the short description. But there are two slides here to describe the more detailed model. So uh, C here is a set of strict subsets of K, or 1 to K, where K is the number of pieces. I've got K pieces. And then a peer that has a set of pieces C, we call a type C peer. Okay. So initially, they might be a type empty set peer if they don't have any pieces. And when they have all the pieces, then they leave. And then a type C peer becomes a type C union I peer if it downloads piece I that it didn't have before. So the peers, their types change as they get more pieces. We model the downloads as instantaneous. It just happens like that. Um, we could uh, have a time to download. And then there's a problem. What if someone is, down, uh, is uploading to somebody else, but then they finish downloading? Then do they leave right away, or do they finish uploading? And it's, there's a lot of choices to make. So just to keep the model simple, we think of the, the models being instantaneous, but then you can't keep downloading instantaneously the whole file. You've got to wait. It's like a thinking period in the, mathematically. But in reality, uh, it, it's really the time that it takes to download, which we model as an exponential random variable. <coughs> so, uh, and this gives us a Markov model. So the, the detailed Markov state would be, you could even be more detailed than this, but uh, you could keep track of the number, x of c is the number of type c peers, number of peers that have a, a, a given collection of, of pieces. A more detailed model would e you'd even keep track of the names of the peers and the history of the individual peers. But, um, but in one model, all the, all the peers that have the same number of pieces would be uh, equivalent. And we assume exogenous arrivals of type C peer as a Poisson process of rate lambda sub C. So this was in the Masuli of Ojnevik model. <coughs> so when peers come, they, they have pieces, and if uh, for example, they looked at the case when lambda c is uh, 1 over k, or, or say lambda over k, um, if c is a singleton set and 0 otherwise. And that would mean every, every peer comes with one piece, which is uniformly distributed over all the possible pieces. Uh, we call it the one piece at the door model. We, to walk in, when you walk into the room, you're given a random piece. And then you can start trading it, you know, trading up to get your whole collection. <coughs> okay, the random uniform contacts means when you decide to contact somebody, you choose one of the other peers at random uh, with uniform distribution. Okay, uh, the opportunities to upload or download from another peer occur at rate mu. So it's like you've got a Poisson clock in your pocket. It goes off at rate mu. And when it goes off, then you contact another peer to upload. 
or to download. It doesn't, you should be one or the other, but it doesn't really matter because the, the contacts that someone has, gets opportunities to, say, upload to would come at rate mu, or the opportunities to download come at rate mu also by, because there's equal numbers of uploaders and downloaders because everybody's an uploader and everyone's a downloader. Okay. Um, <coughs> there's a random useful piece selection. So this means when you contact a peer and, and, and you're going to give a piece to them, you look to see if you have a useful piece. And if you do, then you transfer at random one of the pieces that you have that's useful to them. Okay. So this isn't uh, the rarest first model. Uh, the peers operate among themselves in a push mode or a pull mode, and, and the math is the same. It doesn't matter. You could, it could be either one. Uh, but then there's a seed, the fixed seed here, uh, which pushes pieces to the peers at rate u sub s. And u sub s is a, a number. It's fixed. It doesn't depend on how many seeds, uh, how many peers there are in the system. Whereas the, uh, this interaction kind of scales up. But it's sort of proportional to the number of uh, peers in the system. So there's more and more peers there's more and more service rate. So that scales up, but the seed doesn't scale. Uh, it doesn't dynamically vary with the, uh, the state of the system. That's the, the math model. Is there any question about that? Yeah? Uh, you said they're not coded. Right? Pieces are not coded. No, they're just the file's broken into K pieces, and a peer has to get all K pieces. Yeah? So for mu, is it uh, constant? Mu is constant. Yeah, well, mu is the uh, sort of the rate that you can upload. So 1 over mu would be the mean time to transfer a file or, or the mean time between contacts. Uh, so uh, so the number is the same there as the one Yeah, well, um, well, see, as you, if you're at uploading, if you look at uploading, uh, you'll be more likely to have a piece to give somebody. Uh, but you still, the how, uh, we assume that, uh, or th this is their model, uh, that, that the contact time is still 1 over mu, and then if you can't upload a piece, you just sit, sit there and sort of, sort of waste time. Uh, but then if you do have a piece, then you, it takes the same amount of time. Uh, so you're, you're suggesting a different model where if you don't have anything useful to uh, send, maybe you should... Uh, do a contact sooner or something. So, yeah, there's, you can make this model more realistic and in particular applications uh, make variations of it, but uh, uh, can, can you upload and download at the same time? This is allowing you to upload and download kind of at the same time. It's instantaneous, okay, in this model. So there are some times when you download and sometimes you upload, and uh, they're, they're all instantaneous, but uh, a more detailed model would be a lot more complicated to analyze because you'd have a state. And every, every uh, peer would be in the upload state, download state. But a peer's got to upload or download k pieces. We use k equal 40 in our simulations, or k could be 200. So if you go down to that detailed level, you'll have a harder time sort of getting a sort of more global picture. So it's, it's kind of a, a light model at that level. There is, a, at some of the conferences, there's whole sessions on simulating peer-to-peer -peer systems, and there's about 10 different sites where you have a lot of Python code, and you take into account the uh, topology. And then, but the idea, you know, then some people have some ideas, and then they sort of implement them in more and more realistic scenarios, or they do a deployment. Yeah, so that's kind of the, how things are. Okay, but that's the, that's the model. Okay. So what did uh, the Masulia Vojnov do next? Well, they, they looked at a, um, oh, the, 
it's a Markov chain, and, and uh, so x is a, the rate. So it's, it's uh, x sub c is how many pairs are type c, and then the transition rates. So x goes to x plus e sub c. This means that the uh, the vector increases by one in the cth coordinate at rate lambda c. That corresponds to a new arrival of a pair that's type c, that has a, co a collection of c. C is a set of uh, pieces it has when it arrives. And then you've got transfer rates. So this is a transfer. Uh, some pair of type c gets a piece i. So it, you have one fewer pair of type c, and then one more pair of type c plus i. And that happens at the rate that peers of type C get contacted by peers that have piece I. Okay. So, so if X of C would be the number of peers of type C divided by X. Um, so say, look at the, the seed here, U, S contacts peers, C contacts peers at rate U sub S. So the, the rate that it contacts uh, peers that have type C would be U sub S times X C divided by X fraction of pairs that have type um, type C. <coughs> and then given that it, it, the, the seed contacts a pair of type C, it will upload a piece to that pair, which is uniformly distributed among the K minus C, this is the size of C, the K minus C packets that the pair didn't have. So the probability it chooses piece I would be uh, 1 over K minus C. So this gives you the rate that you uh, the seed transfers uh, pieces to the uh, peer of type C. And then similarly, this is the, peer, the rate that peers of type S transfer to type C. So the number of peers of type S, and then how many pieces does a uh, peer of type S have that C doesn't have? You're going to choose one of those at random because you're going to choose a random useful piece to transfer. And then, you know, and then times mu is the upload rate. So that, that would be the, uh, the rate or transition rate for the Markov chain to go from one state to the other. Okay. So this is a uh, it's countable state Markov chain. Okay. And these are and then other transition r rates uh, entries of Q uh, off the diagonal are zero, and then the diagonal is as negative numbers so that the row sums are equal to zero. The usual Markov uh, chain description. Okay. <coughs> so then. Uh, they look at a fluid limit. So there's a, a theorem of Kurtz on a density dependent jump Markov processes. So here you take a, a sequence of processes indexed by a parameter n, and then let xn be the nth process. And what's done is the arrival rate is scaled up. Okay, you scale up the arrival rate with n. Uh, so this will give more peers in the system. Of course, with more peers in the system, the total exchange rate goes up linearly also. Uh, so you may get a, a, a limit. <coughs> and you do, you get a fluid limit. In their case, they had the seed rate was zero, although you could have let the seed rate also go up linearly with n. Um, and <coughs> then you look at the, you scale the process, then look at the nth process divided by n. So n is just a parameter, but you, you scale that, then that random process, if, if the initial state converges to a constant vector, for example, empty system, <coughs> then the whole random process converges to a deterministic trajectory x in probability uniformly in bounded intervals in time, <coughs> where this x satisfies a differential equation, just x dot equals qx, where you use the same q matrix. And it's just like a f if you go back to these, uh, these rates, you could just think of uh, an amount of fluid at uh, each uh, type C, and the fluid kind of moves around at these rates. So that depend on the state. Okay, and that just gives you an ordinary differential equation that you can use to analyze the system. So that's what they did. <coughs> so that's Masuli and Bojnovic. So they analyzed the ordinary differential equation, and they looked at the case of uh, one piece upon entry model. So every, every peer comes and they get one piece upon entry, and the, and the identity of the piece is uniform from 1 to k. So they say, well, we've got all these differential equations. There's 2 to the k minus 1. You, you, you can't have all the pieces, because if you have all the pieces, you leave. So um, and also, 
you can't have the empty set because everybody comes with one piece. So there's two to the k minus two state equations, but it's symmetric. So, uh, so the, the number of pairs that have, piece, have 14 pieces should be the same no matter which 14 pieces there are. So you can reduce it from 2 to the k minus 2 equations down to uh, k minus 2 equations. Just how many pairs have piece 1, how many pairs have piece 2, <coughs> and then uh, run those differential equations. Uh, and this is kind of assuming symmetry because you're looking at the symmetric state. Okay, <coughs> so they... Uh, they, they, they looked at the uh, ordinary differential equations and then they identified, they call it the resting point or the stationary point of the differential equation. They conjectured that it, the one they found is globally asymptotically stable. And then at the resting point, they looked at the amount of time in system or the, the, the sojourn times in the stages. Like how long would a pair be expected to have one piece? How long would it be expected to have two pieces? and so forth. So as a peer is in the system, it uh, gets more and more pieces, and they found from the fixed point that these t's are all bounded between 1 and 2. Um, why would it be bounded? The reason it would be uh, less than 2 is, you know, all the peers should have, if you contact a random peer, they should have about half the pieces, and, and uh, so uh, they should be able to, to help you with probably at least a half. Even if you're only missing, even if you just have one piece left, if you contact a random peer, if they have half the pieces, you'd have like a 50-50 chance that uh, you should, should get, some, get the piece. So the amount of time you should wait for the last piece on the average would be two, or two over mu, uh, right? So this, this is all, I think this is normalized with mu equal to one. And there was an earlier, one of the early first papers was written by a student here, Chu, and with, with Srikant. This is a widely cited paper. And they didn't have the, the multiple stages. They just assumed that when two peers contact each other, the, the number of pieces they have is uniformly distributed between 1 and k. And then you do a calculation to see what's a probably one peer could help the other peer on the basis of that assumption. And you get some parameter eta, and uh, you get a two-dimensional equation. And this analysis comes very close. So you, uh, you can view this as a generalization of uh, Q. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Somebody? How would you pronounce that? Chu? <coughs> Q-I-U. Q-I-U? Oh, maybe I, I might have... Uh, Misspelled it, sir. Yeah. Q, okay, Q. I. Okay, good. Uh, Q. Um, so and three. Okay. Um, anyway, this is uh, it's very nice. So uh, you know, if you totally planned the exchanges, it would take uh, k time units, or if mu is equal to one, and so it's like a factor of two more. So, you know, that's very good. Uh, in fact. These might be be close to one. You can sort of graph them out, and then they've got, got nice analysis. <coughs> And so one way to think about this is that it's a more detailed work where you keep track of the stages, and it's, uh, it shows that the earlier results of Q and Srikant, and there's also a paper by Ying and Devechiana, uh, aren't weren't too far off. And everything looks really nice and reasonable. But uh, we were, uh, G was simulating this, and our, the stochastic packet level simulations of this model showed poor performance. <coughs> And we focus here on a similar scenario. So actually, we were working exactly on the one piece of the door model without knowing about that paper. But we decided uh, a, a different model would be more appropriate. So we got rid of the initial seeding, took that out. So the peers come empty. But then the seed is uploading at rate uh, u sub s uh, equal to 1. Okay, So the peers come empty. <coughs> Uh, and then uh, the seed up rate uploads uh, pieces at rate one. Okay, and then we and you can write fluid models for that, which are very similar. Here's simulations. So this is the number of peers in the system for a thousand time slots, with the arrival rate is uh, 0.6, uh, and arrival rate is 0.8. And if on the average there's and this is for 40 pieces, so if they spend uh, maybe between 40 and 80 time units in there. 
by Little's law, you would take lambda times 40 to 80, and you get the average number of peers that should be in the system. And it looks very consistent with the, uh, th that fixed point analysis of the fluid equations. But then when we looked at a <coughs> little bit larger values of lambda, uh, it's, it's really unstable. The number of peers uh, seems to be going off to infinity. And uh, why did this happen? We were trying, trying to figure out what, what's going on here. We call, okay. And uh, so to look at this more, we looked at, you know, what peers have what pieces. And we call this the missing piece syndrome. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, when lambda is 0.6, if you look at the number of peers that are holding piece uh, 1, piece 2, up to piece 40, <laughs> so this is the average number of uh, peers in the system. And about half of the peers, average over the time of the simulation, hold any one of the pieces. And it turns out, for this simulation, piece 8 was the rarest piece. It was the least represented. We do a similar simulation for land equal to 1.4, and it turned out piece number 4 uh, was very rare throughout the simulation. It's very rare. Now, how, how why? And, uh, and, and note the scale here. This is going up to 15. Here it's going up to 200 peers have piece, piece one and so forth. So what's going on? It's a symmetric model, but there's like a symmetry breaking here. This happened to be piece number uh, three, but it could have been any piece. And uh, what happens? Piece three was probably the last piece that was introduced into the population. And all the other peers had been exchanging, and they, they had almost a complete collection. And then when piece three came in there, anyone that got it left. They just leave. Because <coughs> that's the model, is uh, that the peers leave when they get. So this is like this conference, OK? I've got, the la I've got all the pieces. Okay, but people are going to leave, and we want to remember things as a community, okay? So you should keep people around a little while and make sure that you get all the pieces, okay? <coughs> I think if some sociologists could use this as a model for how does a population, you know, remember things. Uh, I've heard of religious orders where there's monks or whatever, and write, they have to write everything down, and everyone has to recopy everything and, and so forth. So... <coughs> uh, it's kind of like that. <laughs> anyway, that's what happens. <laughs> and uh, through these simulations, we, we <coughs> you know, th this use of S is one here. That's the rate that the seed is uh, providing pieces. And then we realize that's kind of the threshold for the lambda. <coughs> if, the, uh, if lambda is less than the seed rate, then it's like this, because the seed can always provide that last piece, because this the seed is providing contacts. If you have a lot of people, they're all missing piece three or whatever it is. Whenever the seed contacts, then they'll give them piece three. And if that's faster than the total arrival rate, then the system should be stable. Whereas if new peers are coming along <coughs> faster than the seed is giving out the pieces, then you'll get this accumulation of large number of peers that are missing that piece. Okay. <coughs> so that's the proposition. Uh, we just submitted this to uh, I. ISIT, that if uh, in the case when lambda C is zero, when C is not the empty set. So all the peers come with just, uh, they come at rate lambda with no pieces, then the process is positive recurrent if lambda is smaller than the seed rate and transient if lambda is bigger than the seed rate. And I'd just like to go through uh, the proof of this, um, which is based on the intuition I gave. Uh, so, uh, if lambda is bigger than u sub s, so you've got this whole state space. So what we do is, uh, it could have been any piece, it could have been piece three that was missing, but we, let's let's call it say piece one. So we start in a state. <coughs> see if you have a Markov process that's positive recurrent, uh, then like the mean time to hit zero should be finite no matter where you start. <coughs> but to show it's transient. It's enough to find one state and then show that the process converges to infinity with positive probability from that state. Okay. So that's what we did. And 
the initial state we choose is to have a large one club. So it would be like here, you have a lot of peers that have all the pieces except for piece one. Say they're in the one club. And <clears throat> then there we do a localization, which I won't talk too much about, <clears throat> but it's like we just want to look in this wedge and <clears throat> we sort of, we want to assume that we always have a really large one club. Okay, and then that should be self-reinforcing. And uh, so we look at this random process as long as we have a large one club. So the fraction of peers in the one club uh, should always be bigger than 1 minus C, where C is some small number. And then if, if we ever fall out of that, we just start over or do something else uh, <coughs> so that we can just analyze the system as if there's always just a large number of peers in the one club and nothing else. And then we want to show that with high probability, we, we never have to do this restart. Okay. So we want to show the trajectory goes like that. <coughs> so this is a picture we made um, to illustrate this. So <coughs> peers are coming, and we, we call a peer a, a normal young peer. It's a young peer if it doesn't have all of the pieces besides piece one. So it doesn't have pieces two through k. <coughs> and, and a young peer gets pe and there's a one club, this is a large balloon here because most of the peers are in here. They've got all the pieces except for uh, piece one, and then they, they're downloading all, all those pieces to the young peers, and then the normal, normally the young peers come in here and then they get all the pieces except piece one, and then they, uh, they go to the one club. <coughs> and then the only way to get out of the one club is that the, the fixed Actually, there's two ways. The fixed seed can give that piece one to them. Okay. <clears throat> but, but sometimes the fixed seed can also give piece one to a, a young peer. That's what I'm trying to do here today. Okay. <clears throat> then you're dangerous because you'll be a young peer around and then you can pass that seed on to a lot of other peers for a long time. <clears throat> so you become infected with knowledge or of that piece. <clears throat> okay. So these are that, that's this black line. So then you've got these infected young peers, and then they can infect other young peers who also become infected, okay? And at the same time, they can help people break out of the one club because they pass on that last piece of information like that. Okay, so that's, <coughs> that's what can happen. But um, if this lambda is small, small, if this lambda is smaller than u sub s, then, see, most of the, or sorry, if it's larger, if lambda is larger than u sub s, normally the young peers end up here, and so uh, if, if and the initial state has this being very large, then the flow into the one club is close to lambda, and basically the main way to get out of here is to get the uh, seed at rate u sub s, which is smaller than lambda, so the one club just blows up. Okay, that's, that's the, what we, we show on the proof. So uh, without equations and stuff, that's what, what the proof looks like. Uh, <coughs> then more details. If you look at the number of young peers, that's stochastically dominated by an MGI infinity queuing system. <coughs> that's because all the young peers are being served by this one club close to rate mu. Because um, they're getting downloads, and most of their downloads are coming from one club members, and so it's rate mu. <coughs> And so that sort of stays bounded, this, this set of young peers. And <coughs> the service time there is, is how long it takes to get k minus 1 pieces when the pieces are coming at a little bit at rate mu or a little bit smaller than rate mu. <coughs> okay. And then uh, if a seed creates, turns one of these young peers into an infected peer, <coughs> so I mentioned that infected peer could infect some more peers and they could infect more peers, and it's a branching process. And the idea is to show that this branching process is highly subcritical. That means it dies out very, very soon. And that's because most peers don't have any offspring because most of the normal young peers that get infected, when they're uploading, most of their uploads are going to be to the one club because when they contact peers at random, they find the one club. They don't find the other normal young peers to, to infect with that seed. Okay. So there are very few offspring. And so what you want to look at is the sum of the amount of time that the infected peers are in the system. And there's also a branching process in queuing theory in MGI in a single server queuing system where you look at each customer and then how many customers arrive while that one's being served, then how many customers arrive when those are being served. 
you get the length of a busy period. So that the amount of time, the total amount of time that all these peers are in the system has the same distribution as the length of a busy period, and there's formulas for it, and we can show that it's, it's small. And so we have a branching process that's highly subcritical. The total number of the one club members um, <coughs> that, that, are, that are knocked out because of uh, one infection has a finite mean and variance, and, it, and it's got a low rate, so we can show that it's kind of negligible. All right, so. <coughs> Um, I sort of said that. So I, I think that's enough on the uh, why it's transient if lambda is bigger than mu. So how do you prove it's uh, positive recurrent if lambda is smaller than mu, Sebas? Did any of you see my talk at the I Northwestern last summer? What do we show? Proofs? How do we prove stability? Foster Lyapunov criteria, yeah, and you've got to find a Lyapunov function. What Lyapunov function do you look for first? Quadratic Lyapunov function. I don't know, it's, it seems to work. So, uh, but you need a, a function of the state, some quadratic function if lambda is bigger than u sub s to show that it decreases. And you can't just, well, it's hard to find it just by blindly guessing. You have to have some intuition. <coughs> So this is a proof of positive recurrence as lambda is less than u sub s. <coughs> so we want a negative trip. So <coughs> one idea is to try to look for a function that doesn't depend on the detailed state, but only depends on how many peers have i pieces for each value of i. And, and to prove stability, you've got to show that there's no way for this process to escape. You have to sort of look at all states. So one, <coughs> one case is when almost all the peers have the same number of pieces. And that could be bad because they might have the same set of pieces and they can't help each other. Okay. <coughs> but that's where we use the assumption that the lambda is less than the fixed seed rate, so then the seed can help break out of this state. Okay. And if all the peers don't have the same number of pieces, then there'll be two numbers where some peers have, you know, a, a sizable number of peers have I pieces and a sizable number of peers have J pieces. In this case, these peers can always help these pieces, these pairs. So there will be a high download rate for these guys because they're, they're, there's, uh, if you think of knowledge again, knowledge can be passed from J to I at high rate. <coughs> so um, this Lyapunov function works. You have some constants decreasing. And C sub I is the number of pairs with I or fewer pieces. And, th and this sort of, you kind of understand this by, uh, <coughs> if you just, if there's just if the if there's like two cases, if uh, all the peers have the same number of pieces, or almost all the peers have the same number of pieces, you can show that this has a negative drift because uh, the the fixed seed will get peers out of here, and when a peer goes from i to i plus one pieces, it's it's multiplied by a smaller constant, <coughs> and then uh, then you've got arrivals come into this. There's a number of pieces with i or fewer pieces, so your arrival rate lambda departure rate u sub s, which is larger, and it decreases. Or if there's two i and j, then the largest term here will be the ith term. That'll be the, like the first significant term. But then because of these j pairs, they, they'll help the ith term decrease. Okay. Even though these pairs are stuck, they enter the Lyapunov function with a smaller constant because they're, they're further out. So anyway, that works. As when you have a lie up in a function, the proof is very short. Uh, it's, it's less a half a page long or something like that. It's just that it is. You just have to check it out that it works. <coughs> okay. I um, just want to do a little, finish up with some discussion. <coughs> so one conclusion of the results is that uh, the order of limits makes a difference. So you can have, you can take n go to infinity in a fluid model and find a fixed point. You, it might be locally attractive or something, but that doesn't mean you've got a stable system. Like they, they thought they had a stable system. Actually, they conjectured that they had a, a globally stable equilibrium, and actually this work shows it w it's not globally stable. Um, and also, their, their analysis might be fine for flash crowds. Maybe for a short period of time in a large N with a large arrival rate, maybe there's not enough time for this uh, one piece syndrome to show up. <coughs> uh, we did an analyze, I gave the analysis for our model, 
but the same analysis works for their model. And um, I, I think in the interest, I've got plenty of time, but I know you're, you've got two days of our talk, so I won't go <coughs> through this. Um, all right, so. Um, so <coughs> the one club problem shows up, <coughs> but you, you can go back to the uh, ODE. So I think one, one conclusion is, uh, the order of limits matters. Well, the n go to infinity to a differential equation and analyze that. It's not the same as the stochastic system. <coughs> but the other thing is, once you get these symmetric equations, uh, it's not enough just to look at s symmetric solutions, okay? Because there, there's a symmetry breaking that comes up. So the, the way the system gets unstable is a, a non-symmetric exit trajectory, and uh, it's statistically symmetric, so that means there's actually k exit paths, and one of those k is chosen, they'll be equally likely, but with probability one, one of those k paths will eventually be chosen and it goes off to infinity. <coughs> okay, so even if you have symmetric equations and you want to prove stability, uh, you have to consider non-symmetric initial conditions. And if you do that, uh, for their model and for our model, you can find, if the initial state you want to use is uh, having a large one club. Start with a, a state where you've got a lot of peers that have all the pieces except piece one. It's a non-symmetric initial state, non-symmetric in the pieces, and you can show that it goes to infinity if lambda is bigger than if u sub s. Um, uh, See, so you note that a seed giving one piece per new peer does the same work on average as a seed constantly uploading at the critical rate. Um, see. So b basically, you, you can also see, uh, I mean, uh, when a, peer, a new peer comes in in our model, uh, it's, it's not useful at all until it gets one piece. So it's like one, so, at the, so the seed has to make up for that. So the amount that the seed has to make up for is on average, the seed has to give one piece to a peer. And you can think of that making up for the fact that the peer is not useful for the first time unit. And that same uh, interpretation works in the masulier bolzhnevik model. If, if, if everyone gets one piece at the door and it's randomly um, chosen, if, if all pieces are not equally likely, then it's transient. And if all pieces are equally likely, then it's barely stable. It's, it's uh, just on the, on, the, on the edge being stable. Uh, I just have one more slide here. <coughs> So uh, there's three mechanisms implemented or commonly discussed for enhancing peer-to-peer -peer systems. Okay. This gets into coding a little bit. So one is uh, rarest first piece selection, okay. so, which was not in this model. So rarest first piece collection, you try to, s to decide which piece is rarest when you have an exchange and try to make sure the rarest piece gets exchanged. You could use uh, network coding or coding at the source in which case peers and the seed exchange linear combinations of the packets. Okay. Um, so instead of trying to collect k particular packets, you just uh, have a set of packets and each is a linear combination of the pieces and it corresponds to a matrix and you just have to have the matrix be full rank and then um, you invert it and get the pieces. Okay. <coughs> or you could have some peers remain in the system for some time after completing the collection. So some peer gets the whole collection, but stays around some period of time. <coughs> so which, which ones of these defeat the one club syndrome? Pardon? The third one, the third one uh, obviously, yeah. Because uh, some, uh, some peer gets all of the pieces and then stays around, and he can keep uh, knocking people out of the one club. It's, it's <coughs> You don't need too much because a fixed seed rate with just U sub S, if you could just talk a couple of other peers sticking around forever or just have each peer stay around long enough to upload one more piece, one last piece after they get their collection, that's sort of enough uh, for them to do that. How about rarest first piece selection? What if you're in the one club, there's a large one club, piece one is missing. <coughs> what piece do they, whenever there's a contact, and piece one can be transferred. Which piece is transferred? Piece one. <coughs> it is rare. I mean, everyone has a thirst. They're all missing piece one. So um, 
they could use rarest first, first piece selection and, and it's, they'll still have the same problem. Okay. So that, that doesn't prevent this. How about network coding? Suppose you have all the peers are missing one dimension. They just need some packet to come in that's a linear combination of all the pieces and the coefficient of that one missing piece that they're missing has to be positive. And maybe the, the source randomly sends out li random linear combinations. It's the same problem because as soon as one of those peers gets enlightened with a packet, it, it will leave. So it's, it's up to the source to uh, provide that last dimension. Okay. Um, <coughs> That's for this model. It's, it, so uh, for this model, we could say only the third one uh, prevents this. But the, uh, if the pieces are given at the door, everyone comes in with a random piece, and it, the piece they get is a random linear combination of the pieces, then you wouldn't have this problem because it would be like every new peer would be infected. But every, every new peer could help people get out of it. If they're missing a dimension, all the new peers could help. It's like every, every peer could help everybody else, okay? So, so it's, it depends somewhat on the model. Um, that's all I want to talk about today. Thank you. Uh, for the simulations, uh, we started out with an uh, empty system. Th and uh, uh, see. <coughs> it's a number of peers in the system in one simulation. <coughs> and this actually should have gone down here, down to zero. But for some reason, G, when he wrote this, uh, it only counted the number uh, when there's a departure. So. Uh, and there aren't any departures because the peers have to get, but it should go up here like this. It start, starts out at zero, and it sort of reaches a steady state. It's sort of like a stable queuing system. So this, these are just two trajectories for a run for different arrival rates. And then uh, these are also two trajectories run for, t for two different arrival rates. But these arrival rates are larger than one, and the, and, and the seed rate is one. And this scale here is, goes up to 450, where the other one only goes up to 90. So, so, uh, so for these arrival rate, maybe it might be good to put all four of these on one uh, scale. And so the other two would be like down here. And then when lambda gets bigger than one, they, they start. So what's the number of the seed that you need? There's one seed, <coughs> uh, which uploads at rate one. Uh, oh, they 40 pieces. Yeah. These simulations were for 40 pieces. Yeah. I mean, uh, so this the theory of uh, Markov chains. It's an irreducible Markov chain. <coughs> okay, so all the states have the same type. They're all transient or they're all positive recurrent or they're all null recurrent. So if you just show that one particular state is, re is uh, null recurrent, then they're all null recurrent. <coughs> so what happens is that wherever you start, you'll eventually get to having a large one club. In theory, it could be really a long time, but in practice, it turns out it's not very long. Uh, because uh, so we saw it all the time. Where, uh, the, the numbers were always like, a f I, I said, gee, these, these numbers are all an order of magnitude higher than it should be. Uh, and uh, <coughs> then we found out that the, all the peers are missing a piece. Then we found out they're all missing the same piece. Although in some simulations, you get close to uh, 
close to one, and they all might be missing piece four for a long time, but then finally that comes in there, but then they all start missing some other piece for a long time. So, um, so there is a regime where it, it, it happens pretty quickly. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to thank.